called Bookout Madness, and we are doing another review today. This time, it's the Cybergun take on the P90 by FN Personal, which is a Belgian company. Um, the gun was provided by Ice Raven, so say hello. Um, uh, so far, it's been pretty good for reliability. There has been issues with it being locked in full auto. We can't, for some reason, shoot it on semi, but the gun was purchased secondhand and heavily used. So that is most likely just a problem that came with it being like modifications installed, but we have no idea. The cost is about uh, a bit over 200 Canadian, which is a bit over 150 American. So, Definitely not bad at all for the price. Alright, so the FN, P FN Herstal P90 personal defense weapon was developed in the late 20th century in, con in conjunction with the FN 5.7 pistol, which both of which use the same ammo, which is 5.7 times 28 millimeter. It is ideal for armor piercing, though there have been complaints about rather limited stopping power. Fortunately, both the P90 and the 5.7 hold a decent amount of ammo in them, so if they don't drop after one, you can keep shooting. Um, it was really, really unique for its top-down feeding system, which is the result of this odd-looking mag here. And it has been now used by militaries across the world, though not in its intended role. It was originally meant to be headed out to support and non-combat personnel, although it sees most of its use in law enforcement and special forces units across the world. Alright, so we're going to be having an up-close look at the P90. So, right away, most obvious thing, custom paint job. This was done by Waven. It matches his sniper rifle, and he likes both of them. Um, build quality is fine. It's plastic, but so is the real gun. Um, there are metal parts, like I believe the barrel's metal, and a few of the internal parts are obviously metal. Though the exterior is almost all plastic. Um, not a bad thing. It definitely is a lighter gun. If you really wanted to, you could use it one-handed, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Your fire select uh, is down here. This is safe, semi, and full. Now, this gun doesn't work in semi, but that's just because it's a second-hand gun, and it's seen a lot of use. I have absolutely no idea where the hop-up is, but the mag release is here. Uh... P90 mags are weird, but you know what? <laughs> I guess it's part of their charm. Okay. So. I guess the next thing to mention is the specs. It is 500 mil... 500 mil... Sorry. Yeah. It's 500 millimeters long. I don't think that's right. Um, anyways, it's 20 inches long. It's, yeah, no, that is right. It's 20 inches long, sorry. Um, I'm second guessing myself. It is 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds. It has a 290 millimeter inner barrel, which is 11.4 inches. And it shoots around 400 FPS. And if you didn't know, your battery goes in your stock. You push this part in. And I'm sorry, this would be easier to do without gloves on. Um, Alright, okay, we got that off. Now, don't lose your butt plate, obviously, but uh, that's kind of common sense. Uh, it doesn't have the biggest battery room, but it, it's fine. I'm, yeah, this can fit either this style of LiPo or the more fat one. Either one works fine in it, to my knowledge. You can fit nickel metal hydride batteries in as well, like certain kinds, but I don't pers- I, I don't know the style because I don't use nickel metal hydride for most of my guns. I'm stupid, I was putting that on upside down. <laughs> okay, 
got it back on. So, um, I guess final word kind of for this. There, oh, sorry. Uh, there have been mods done to this. It is, it was bought secondhand by Raven. So I honestly can't tell. Um, it is licensed by FN, so it does have the FN Herstal markings, which is kind of a nice little detail. But, uh, yeah. So all things considered, it's not a bad little PDW. I definitely wouldn't mind using it if I absolutely had to. So, yeah. Alright, so, um, for the range test for the Cybergun P90, I do have to disclose, one, it cannot fire in semi because something is broken inside it. It is a second-hand gun. And two, it has been modified, so it will not perform as the same as a stock P90. And three, I have no sights on this. So when I fire at these, heaven help me, I may hit them, I may not. Now, um, the targets are 40 feet away, 70 feet away, and 100 feet away. So we're gonna see how many hits I get at those ranges and that'll determine what I think about the maximum engagement distance of this gun is. All right, first, uh, as usual, the 40 feet target. The battery could maybe use some charging. I think. Oh no, okay. Well, I'm not trying to say hit anything. Oh, that was some good hits. I think that was one hit. Alright, so uh, let's go check the targets. Alright, so I was spraying and playing without a sight, so the fact that I got any hits at all is a good thing. So that's two body shots and a headshot at 40 feet. Let's go check the 70 feet. Um, three headshots, so he's still very much dead. Let's uh, check the last guy, see if I got any hits at 100 feet. Well, short answer, no. Long answer, no. <laughs> um, I hit the frame a couple times, I could hear it. Uh, I think that's just a crease in the paper, I don't think that's actually a hit. So... With this kind of wind, I wouldn't say your chances of hitting anything at 100 feet without a sight are pretty good. But still, not bad for a gun without a sight. Alright, let's uh, head back to uh, shooting position. Alright, so for a gun with a decently short barrel and no sight on it, it didn't perform as bad as I expected to in this wind. Um... I was mostly just tracing my BBs to see where it was going, so I it's a bit sketchy, but I did get kills to 40 and 70 feet away from me, whereas the 100 feet target was mostly untouched. He would have been nicked if it were a person, but we don't really count those, so for all intents and purposes, I wouldn't want to engage anyone further than 80 to 100 feet away from me with this. Unless I absolutely had to. But I would say that would conclude the range test. All right, so apart from some issues of it just lobbing BBs occasionally for no apparent reason at all, and the fact that it's stuck on uh, full auto pretty much, it's pretty good, especially for the really quite low price tag that it has. So I definitely, would keep this reserved for close quarters engagements only, but I would also definitely recommend it if you need something that's compact and uh, affordable because it's really not that expensive at all.